So there's an interview that I was watching on Newsroom Live earlier on, and they were interviewing the former Minister of International Relations, Dr. Naledi Pandu, and she said something very shocking. According to Dr. Naledi Pandu, there were no signs that the ANC would be in the government of national unity today. There were no signs that there would be some sort of working coalition in the country today. Dr. Naledi Pando believed that the ANC would win with an outright majority. So people are not happy about this statement because obviously it exposes how out of touch the politicians are. And what I found funny about the statement of Dr. Naledi Pando is that she acknowledges that South Africans are facing a lot of problems and South Africans are angry towards the ANC. But for some reason, she still believed that the people would continue to vote for the ANC to win with an outright majority. Guys, this is what the minister said. Yeah, I mean, you've got to wonder what that would have done to, um, you know, what, 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 what happened to the ANC in the years that followed 2017. I mean, you look now, for instance, at this election, the party coming in at 40%, not a great uh, running for the ANC, and now going into this government of national unity before the elections. Was there a sign that the ANC could possibly work with, say, for instance, the Freedom From Plus or the Democratic Alliance or the parties that it has, in fact, included in this government of national unity? And do you think it's a step in the right direction? And guys, do you see how the media is posing this question? Did you think that the ANC would be working with Freedom From Plus? the DA, and do you think this is a step in the right direction? She's obviously misleading her into going and attacking the government of national unity. She's misleading her to attack the government of national unity. The media is working so hard against the government of national unity. And guys, this goes back to what I said earlier on. The people that are wishing for the government of national unity to fail, these are the people that are wishing for South Africa to fail. Because the government of national unity, it is our current government. And if our current government fails, people's lives will not be improved. So I know that in the country we have the people that are on the side of the so-called progressive forces. And these people are wishing for the government of national unity to fail. But they don't understand that if the government of national unity fails, no one actually succeeds in the country. And it looks like the media is working so hard to get people to discredit the government of national unity. I don't like how she posed that question because it was quite misleading. It was quite misleading. Yeah, I mean, you've got to wonder what that would have done to, um, you know, what, 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 what happened to the ANC in the years that followed 2017. I mean, you look now, for instance, at this election, the party coming in at 40%, not a great uh, running for the ANC, and now going into this government of national unity before the elections. Was there a sign that the ANC could possibly work with, say, for instance, the Freedom From Plus or the Democratic Alliance or the parties that it has, in fact, included in this government of national unity? And do you think it's a step in the right direction? Well, I don't think there was a sign. I certainly uh, never expected it. Up to uh, while standing in the election queue, I kept saying to some of your colleagues that we're going to get above 50 percent. So I, uh, through the campaign, had felt that... Uh, we would get a good result. But as you know, uh, there have been many missteps, and I think uh, the voting public uh, uh, was uh, uh, quite upset uh, at the lack or inadequacy of service delivery. So I think uh, we pay the price for that. Um, so maybe um, these new uh, associations 
are an opportunity both for the ANC and for the country uh, to turn a corner and really focus uh, on uh, development of our country, support to all uh, our people, and really focusing on ensuring uh, that we have a quality South Africa. Yeah. So Dr. Daleli Pando only realized after the elections that South Africans are not happy. She only realizes after the elections that South Africans are not happy about the governments of the ANC. This is how out of touch politicians are. And this is exactly why people are not happy with these utterances of Dr. Naledi Pandu because it makes these people or it makes the public to actually believe that these people are not paying attention to the issues that we complain about. We complain about these issues, they don't pay attention to them. When it comes election time, they still believe that we are going to vote for them. And now that we have punished them, they are starting to say, ah, maybe the people were not happy about service delivery. The people are not happy about the problems that are facing the country today. <laughs> man, you see, Dr. Nalili Pandu, man, I believe that she was actually misled into thinking that the issue of Israel and Palestine was going to tip the scale. She believed that by taking Israel to the International Court of Justice, it is going to work in the favor of the ANC here at home. And we told these people that, guys, the South Africans on the ground, the South Africans average, the South Africans on the street, they don't care about what's happening between Israel and Palestine. Average the South Africans on the street, they want jobs. Average the South Africans on the street, they want to feel safe. Average the South Africans on the street, they don't want the children to keep dying in the pit toilets. Average South Africans on the street, they want a better infrastructure. They don't want the potholes that are causing accidents, the accidents that are taking people's lives. These are the issues that people are concerned about. People are concerned about the high inflation. People are concerned about high cost of living, high cost of petrol. These are the issues that people are concerned about. But the supporters of the lives of Naledi Pandu, the supporters of the people that were pushing this movement of taking Israel to the International Court of Justice, they said that we don't know what the hell we are talking about. When we keep saying that average South Africans on the street, they don't care about Israel and what's happening between Israel and Palestine. So I believe that Dr. Naledi Pandu was actually misled into believing that you being on the media all over the world going against Israel, it is actually going to work well for the ANC in the upcoming elections. And it didn't work out well for the ANC in the elections. And now she's starting to admit that, oh, maybe man, it's because people were not happy about the services. People were not happy about the fact that the ANC was doing a terrible job governing the country. It is quite shocking, man, to listen to these people. It's quite shocking. It's quite shocking. So I don't know, man, what do you think about these utterances of Dr. Naledi Pando? Please tell me on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Baba, so I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thomas M.